morning, everyone. Welcome morning. to the City of Bessler's uh, City Council meeting, Tuesday, January the 12th, 2020. 2021. Happy New Year to those I have not spoken to and those that I have not seen. Ms. Taylor, item number one, please. Call to order. Thank you, ma'am. Item number two. You call. Invocation, Pastor Thomas Jefferson Rogers, Jr., New Bethlehem Baptist Church. Good morning, Pastor Rogers. Are you on the line? Pastor Rogers, are you on the line? He is not on the line this morning. I've had a hard time trying to get on as well. Um, we'll have a silent word of prayer. Will you bow your heads, please? Amen. Item number three, Ms. Taylor. Council roll call. Councilor Alexander. Present. Councilor Collier. Councilor Collier. Councilor Crusoe. Present. Councilor Marshall. Present. Councilor Thickpen. Present. Councilor Matthews? Present. Councilor Donald? Present. We have six present, one absent, we have a quorum. And uh, Councilor uh, uh, President, uh, Count, uh, Pastor Rogers, I just spoke with uh, the church and he was uh, under the impression that it was the 19th, not today. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll just... Okay. Speak okay. with him and add him to the 19th. Thank you, okay. uh, Councillor Matthews. Um, item number four, Ms. Taylor. Scott Crawford, Incorporated, regarding 1800 Third Avenue North. Is a representative from Scott Crawford on the line and or Attorney Payton? Yep, this is uh, Q Elamine from Scott Crawford. Uh, I'm on the line. Good morning. Happy New Year. Uh, good morning. Uh, Happy New Year to you all. I wanted to come back before the council and give an update. Uh, and if I'm allowed uh, share screen access, I just want to show uh, the commitment letter that we have for the loan uh, to purchase the building. Uh, since the last time we've uh, come before the council, uh, we've continued on our process of acquiring the building uh, through a loan from Hope Credit Union. Uh, we've gone uh, back and forth with them uh, on the terms, but we've got, finally got a signed commitment letter uh, with them lending. And I'm pulling up the, uh, the letter now. So you sh should be able to see. So right before the end of the year, uh, they, they granted us a uh, commitment to, to lend on the building. So uh, we can close on the building as soon as we uh, have uh, council approval uh, for the closing of it. Uh, on about two weeks ago, uh, they came out and did an appraisal on the building. Uh, we're also uh, starting the environmental process uh, to make sure that uh, whatever asbestos and lead is on the property that's abated are properly. And uh, the second slide is just the uh, closing uh, items still needed. And we have all of these uh, put together uh, and back to hope, uh, except for the, the liability insurance, which we expect to get in the next day or so. But we uh, have finished all of the other uh, items on this list. And so if we have the approval of the council, uh, then we can move forward with closing uh, as all of the funds uh, have been secured uh, to purchase. Attorney 
Peyton, are you on the line? Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know, is there a question? Are we ready to move forward? Because I thought we had already did what we needed to do with Scott Crawford in order to um, to close on this property. Do we have a date in mind of closure? Well, the the reason you're, this matters back before you now is that the contract was extended a number of times, and each time they uh, we've gone past the date of close. So I told uh, Q, I think it was by email, right before the end of the year, that they needed to come back before the council and have the council. Um, do another contract extension or a new contract um, to allow the closing. So we'll be ready once the council approves the contract. But since the contract had expired some time ago, I felt like it needed to come back before the council. Okay, Attorney Payton, let me ask a question. Now, if if we come back before the council on the 19th and extend that contract will we re will we be ready to close within that week well w we are ready that will be wholly dependent upon scott crawford and their lender uh, getting the information to the closing attorney to close we, the city of Bessemer has always been ready to close and is ready now subject to the council approving the contract okay mr uh, the representative from Scott Crawford, if we um, come back on the 19th, which is the next council meeting, uh, and approve extending that contract, will you be ready to close within that week? Yes, ma'am. Councilor Donald, Any questions? this is Shane. Yes, sir. Can I just, I've, I've closed a number of transactions and and while Mr. Uh, while Q can say that he's ready to close, and I know that he is, and he's saying that in good faith, this will all be dependent upon his lender being ready to close. So, and and it, they say they are, and I, and I think they will. But I think it would be appropriate if you're going to extend this contract to extend it through the end of February, just to give that lender time to get the documents. And you see, you see the document that he has up there. He still has to get these documents to his lender the lender will have to review them. i just think it would make more sense to go to the end of february and that certainly should be enough time for this thing to happen thank you attorney payton right. uh any questions and or concerns counselors madam president yes sir the only question i had was uh on the letter of commitment um it's a commitment in any way uh, contingent upon, you know, the environmental uh, work being done and, and being satisfactory or has that work been completed already? No, that, that work has been completed. Uh, the back end agreement that said that if we don't start work uh, within, I think it was 18 months and that's why we extended the, the loan for that, uh, then the city actually purchased these the building back for a reduced amount, then that put the security to hold credit union because if you know if it was something that was extraordinary with the environmental, they would not be kind of on the hook uh, for the loan. So that's been at the spot. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other Madam counselor? Yes, Chair. sir, Councilor Matthew. Yes, sir, Councilor Matthew. Uh, is Attorney Harris on the line? Attorney Harris, are you on the line? He, he should be walking up. into the he said he should be up. walking into the city hall. Thank you. He's at the city hall. Um Councillor Matthew, he's setting up right now. Okay, well I, I can I can ask I can ask it later. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Don't. Any other counselor? Councilor Matthew, yes, sir. 
this is Shan. Just one more thing, if I could throw out this this commitment is a commitment to purchase the land. This is not a commitment from a lender to you know complete or build the project. So I'd love to hear from a Q as to the status of where they are uh, regarding securing funding to complete the project as presented back to the council. Yep. So uh, as attorney Payton said, this is uh, to acquire the land uh, because we are utilizing the low income housing tax credit program. Uh, the good thing is that with the new administration and new uh, CARES Act, the 4% tax credit which we were utilizing, which is non-competitive, uh, has been, has been, it's called a flat 4%. So we get about 25% more equity into the deal. And so uh, we tend to apply for that as soon as we close uh, because of the site control of the property, we cannot apply for tax credits uh, until we actually close on the building. Uh, but it actually makes the project a lot more feasible with the new money that was uh, provided through the CARES Act. So we anticipate uh, applying for this again as soon as we close uh, and they their turnaround time on, in talking to the Alabama Housing and Finance Authority is about 120 days uh, from application to being approved for the low-income housing tax credits. And then along with that, we'll get uh, our debt uh, because we'll have the equity there to provide for it. That, uh, Madam Chair, well, I guess I'll go and dive in now. That's kind of where, that's kind of where, uh, may I? Yes, sir, Councilor Matthews. Yeah, uh, that's kind of kind of where where I was fishing around when I asked was attorney Harris because I wanted both attorneys to be there. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that that's for acquiring the property, but actual construction and all of that. And because, you know, it's bad when we own a piece of property and it's sitting there, but then when we sell it to someone else and it sits there. So, uh, and I guess my question to you, uh, sir, uh, are you all going to move expeditiously to, I guess, to seek funding for the construction of the structure, uh, rehab, and however you, whatever you're going to do, and not just let it sit there? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, mainly because it's costing us uh, money to hold the land that's next door, and then also on this, we will have a loan, so this is a monthly payment. But the quicker that we uh, close and start construction and get uh, people living there, you know, the quicker that we uh, are able to be uh, profitable and it's a profitable adventure. And so, uh -huh. bottom bottom line, that's you know that's going to really influence us to close as, as quickly as possible. Okay. okay. So, Matt, Matt. To, uh, one moment, roughly to you, we're talking about June twenty twenty one getting started on that building uh yes ma'am yeah we'll we'll, we'll you know, god willing we'll start uh the environmental uh right at that time and then the demolition and then you'll see like full construction near the end of the of the year but yeah we'll be applying as soon as we get this done we already have you know, all of our consultants lined up and we'll start uh the application process so uh, we have a tip well group of sisters uh with that Councilor Marshall, was that you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you. I, that was going to be my question, you know, what the timeline is. Now, um, you, you mentioned something again about environmental. But I, my understanding earlier, your response on the environmental, that environmental issues had already been checked out and, you know, were completed before you got your letter of commitment. Did I misunderstand you? Yep. So the environmental issues, uh, as it related to Hope Credit Union, uh, they're okay moving forward with, with lending, but we still will have remediation uh, that has to be done on the property. And so we have a line item in our budget to do that because we know it's going to be lead, it's going to be uh, asbestos in there. So we will start the process of taking those items out uh, in, in June, that's what I was saying. 
as far as the okay. lending side, it's okay. Okay. Well, the, the, the timeline was what I was concerned about in terms of construction. And I think you verified um, that uh, perhaps June 2021, uh, y'all would be ready to start construction, correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Any other counselor? Counselor Harris, are you on the line? I'm sorry, Attorney Harris, are you on the line? Item number five, Ms. Taylor. Item five, Strata. Dorothy, are you on the line? And or Mr. Waters, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Yes. Good morning. Good morning and happy new year to you. Happy new year Give to you. Give us some good news. I, well, I'm very excited to um, share uh, to formally present um, the City of Bessemer's Vision 2040 framework. And um, I just want to say thank you all for giving us the opportunity uh, to do this important work for the city. Um, we have so much, so many great things happening in the city. And we were just honored to be a part of, of the process of crafting the vision. And so I'll go ahead and uh, get started. Can I present my screen? Uh, you can. I won't be able to see it, but I will. Is it the same presentation, the hard copy that you sent me? It is the, it, it's going to be a summary. That, uh, we're going to just do an overview of the executive summary. So if you follow along the executive summary, you will see some of those same points. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I do apologize. I'm not on I'm not on my computer. I'm on the phone. I am at work. Um, go ahead. Okay. I'm pulling it up now. All right. It's loading up now. But what we're going to cover today, we're going to cover the project overview, the vision and process um, itself, the uh, actual vision statement that we can't with that we develop uh, from the input from you all and from the stakeholders. And we're gonna review the, um, <clears throat> the four environments and the recommended next steps. Can you all see my screen? For those of you oh, who are visual, can you see her screen? Yes, if we not, I'm, yes, I'm yeah, following her. Okay, yes, thank did. you so much. Thank you so right, much. Thank you. Go ahead. All right. So <clears throat> we were uh, we were tasked to produce the vision framework um, as the fundamental document for the city's anticipated comprehensive plan. And so this vision framework encompasses the vision, the vision statement, the values, and the strategic priorities uh, for the city. And now we're gonna go into the actual visioning process itself. So this was the process that uh, Strata used in order to get to this 91 page document that you all um, have. And so with this uh, process, uh, Strata, <clears throat> the process began with a recommendation to you all, to the city's leadership about selecting a committee. And once that com committee was selected, we then went on to doing a series of interviews. Um, we did an online survey and uh, we used data that the city had, such as the impediment analysis uh, document and some of the other documents that, that the city has already produced. And um, <clears throat> so with this process, uh, we used the development of a community profile we assess the current trends, 
uh, to create a probable scenario, which when we did the when we did the visioning workshop, uh, they were giving us um, what, what they wanted for the future of Bessemer. And that's, those are some of the questions that we asked the um, stakeholders in the interview. And in the, um, there, were, uh, there was an open-ended question in the online survey. And so we had a lot of people talk about the things that they wanted to see in the future of Bessemer, a preferred scenario. And so now we're in this process of working with you all to determine what the next actions will be uh, once the council has a chance to digest uh, this entire document. And <clears throat> so that's that, that's that process. And I'm going to get to the vision statement. So the vision statement <clears throat> that was crafted based on the input from the community and from the community stakeholders, uh, Bessemer envisions being a great, excuse me, Bessemer envisions being a city that is livable with a high quality of life where all people can find opportunities to succeed and grow. Bessemer will be an inviting, attractive, diverse, and inclusive community. We want to provide a variety of housing types and choices for all residents. Bessemer will be a healthy, safe, and secure city with well-defined green spaces, parks, and recreation. It will be a vibrant place where people live, work, and play in a revitalized and reimagined neighborhoods throughout the city with a special focus on reinvigorating Bessemer's downtown. As a city, Bessemer welcomes the future and will plan for positive change through our commitment to forge our future together and make Bessemer the place to grow, invest, live, play, work, and visit. And after that, we, we came up with the community values based off of the input, uh, the community involvement input. And we'll start with, uh, these are the values that we found uh, to be common, civic involvement, dynamic leadership, diversity, education, efficiency, excellence, heritage, innovation, opportunity, safety, sense of place, sustainability in regards to community, business and environment and teamwork. And the strategic priorities uh, are listed and we um, use something called the four environments um, and we group those strategic priorities based off of the four environments. The uh, following are the strategic priorities identified. Communications and public image, community pride, design guidelines and standards, economic development, education, environment, health and human services, housing, land use, parks and recreation, public safety, public utilities and infrastructure, downtown revitalization, transportation, and mobility. And those things, again, um, as I stated, they were based off and grouped, um, excuse me, they were grouped based on the four environments. And really quickly, um, I will tell you that the uh, social environment focused on the immediate physical and social settings in which people live. And so the communications and public image, community pride, education, health and human services and public safety fell under the category of social environment. The uh, term, the economic environment refers to all, um, all things economic um, and it, it focuses on things that may be beyond an organization's control it may be either large scale as micro, macro or small scale as micro. And so those two strategic priorities uh, that fell under that category was economic development and uh, the revitalization of downtown. The built environment refers to anything human made for humans and it can be used for human activity. And so the, uh, <clears throat> the strategic priorities that fell up under that grouping was design guidelines and standards, housing, land use, parks and recreation, public utilities and infrastructure, transportation and mobility. And then the natural environment encompasses all living and non-living things that occur naturally on earth, such as vegetation, 
uh, water, microorganisms, and natural resources. And so that's where we covered, we covered the natural environment under that. Our recommended next steps uh, is to conduct a comprehensive planning workshop for the, cities, for the city of Bessemer's leadership in which we pr are proposing that we review the vision framework, select the strategic priorities that are important uh, to, to the city, explain the comprehensive uh, planning process and um, the next recommendation is to adopt the vision framework, uh, develop a mission statement, formally establish the community advisory committee and perform an existing condi conditions analysis, which is the second phase of comprehensive planning. And now I will hand this off to Mr. Waters for uh, some additional recommendations and options. Uh, thank you, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Waters. Good morning. Yes, I, I uh, first of all, I just want to uh, again thank you all for the opportunity. I know there's a lot to digest in the, you know a few minutes presentation, uh, which is why we forward it to you. And uh, if you all get a chance to uh, review the document more in depth over the next week or so, please feel free to give us a call individually if there are questions or uh, comments you have regarding it, we'll be glad to, to uh, spend time with you talking through it before we go to the next next steps. Uh, do any of you have any questions for Dorothy or, or me about um, the executive summary that we um, are with you today? Madam, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Council I, Matthews. I, I concur with good presentation and I concur with Mr. Waters uh, um, with the, the statement he made that it's a lot to digest. It's a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of move it's a lot of moving parts. And uh I have uh I have been a part of uh I don't know if I have my uh I think I have my have my camera turned some some other way but there's another a lot of moving parts that i i see that uh that's uh involved and as i've stated before uh and mr Wall says a lot to digest in this little time frame i i think as 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 large and and it can be complex too and, and but it's good complex uh, I think that we need to devote a meeting just for this, okay? Uh, rather than uh, commingle it with any other meetings of sort, we just need to focus on on Strata. I mean, in our downtown community, uh, I think holistically we can we can come up with uh, we can digest this, come back, and 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 come up with some. Uh, some tangible ideas uh, along with Strata uh, and tackle this, but to, but it's good. Like I said, it's good, good information, good start. But I think we need to devote just a meeting of with Strata only and not on a planning session. But I do appreciate the presentation. Good presentation. Yes, sir. We appreciate it. And that advisory committee, I, I, my hats off to them for putting uh, putting their input in because I think we had a good group of people uh, involved at that meeting, uh, and I think we need to uh, just come up with some dates in the in the future and get together and sit down and uh, go over these. Yeah, we we look forward to that opportunity and. and and like uh, I think Dorothy mentioned, is one of the next steps. We wanted to sit down and talk with you to go through this as well as go through what the process of a comprehensive plan would look like so that you know all of the leadership would be familiar with how that process would go. Right, right. Because Bessma, and, and, and let me say this, because Bessma has some hidden jewels just like Arlington, Texas. Arlington, Texas had uh, old car uh, dealerships, what they turned into breweries. And it, it's and it's some things in Belson can be turned into uh, other things. I won't name them, but there are some uh, hidden se hidden secrets and treasures in Belson 
that can be obtainable, but uh, there has to be some strides put forth to do that. You know, so, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Good job. Madam, Madam Thank Chair. You. Thank you, Councilor Matthews. Yes, sir, Councilor Marshall. Um, I, I heard um, the young lady say that she had sent the presentation out to you. I think um, it would have been good if we could have received a copy prior to this meeting so that we might be able to review it and to, um, you know, we may have had some, some additional questions. So I would appreciate, um, you know, if items are sent to you and the council has approved these projects that we would get a copy as soon as possible so that we can be prepared and uh, better able to um, get involved in the discussion or get any questions answered that, that we might have. Thank you. Mr. Mar Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Um, Mr. Waters from yes, Strata, will you please answer that question? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Councillor Marshall, uh, we, we sent out the package to all the council members on Thursday yeah, uh, in, right. in an le electronic form uh, yeah. so that so that you wouldn't have to deal with so much paperwork. But we sent it out uh, last Thursday afternoon to all council members based on the emails that we got off, uh, off of our spreadsheet. So I'm sorry you didn't get it, but we will make sure that you get it today again. Um, and if there's please. a different email you want us to send it to, please just let us know. Yeah, please do because I did not receive it. Did, were there any other council members that did not receive? I yeah, received I, I, mine. Received, I, received, I received mine. I received mine. Okay. Well, Mr. Marshall, I apologize, but we'll make sure you get an uh, email today with a, a document attached. It's, Madam President, I did not receive it that I see. Who would it have been coming from? It would have been coming from Dorothy. D. George at strataps.com. Okay, I'll look back and see if I have it or not. Please yeah. go ahead. Um, Madam Chair, I'm, Madam I'm, Chair I'm, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm looking at it, and it, it seems to be sent to all the council members, the mayor, CC, to Edmund Waters, Afrita Acoff, and Terrain Norris and Angela Coleman. I mean, it, it has the uh, everyone on here, so I don't know if it got lost in cyberspace or what, but uh, I do see well, that. that may, Ma Madam Chair. Yes, sir. That may, uh, hold on one moment, uh, Council okay. Marshall. That, sure. may sure. the, that may be the, the problem. It may have gotten lost in cyberspace because That's when I looked at my packet, I in turn called Mr. Waters and asked him that all of my counselors get a copy. He said that they did. And the address he sent them to, well, the address he sent it to did not come to me. It didn't come to me at all. So I, if you all would um, give Angela permission to give Mr. Waters the address, um, email address that you all want your, your uh, packets to come to. I think that would settle a lot of it. Councilor Marshall. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that perhaps the subject line could be something other than, um, you know, Miss George's name. And I know it had part of Strata, but if the main subject line could say something like Strata, and then, then we would know. But yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that I give, you know, for whatever uh, email, but. Uh, if I see a, a name that's not familiar to me, I probably won't even address it, okay? But if it, if okay, it had come strata, then I would have opened that immediately. Okay, we, we apologize. Uh, we apologize for that. We'll make sure that uh, a copy gets to everyone, even if I have to take this copy that I have back down to uh, Angela and her scan it in and send it to everyone and then place the, um, a copy on your desk. Um, we'll make sure everyone um, gets a copy. Thank you, um, Ms. George and Mr. Waters for your presentation. We look forward to uh, working with Strata and uh, sitting down with you in a meeting other than these five, six minutes right here with the questions that we have. Thank Thanks, you all and have a Thank great you. day now. You Thank you. Item number, hello? 
Item number six, please. Small sale. Councillor Matthews. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say, you know, the uh, session starts uh, next, next month in the legislature. And we'll know uh, probably what bills uh, are going to be introduced uh, probably in the next week or so because we're going to have executive meeting at the league. And the reason I say that is uh, the small sales, uh, and I'm asking, I don't know, uh, we had made some strides to uh, get uh, Mr. Blankenship uh, involved in in the uh, in the small sale uh, ordinance and some of the work that goes on after an ordinance has been passed. And uh, if this is something that we still want, I, I don't know. I'm asking the question: Is this something that we still want to pursue, pursue, uh, or do we want to just let the bill pass and in Montgomery and we be dictated by it because uh, it's more to it than just passing an ordinance. There's going to have to be some other uh, activities that's going to go on uh, after an ordinance has been, been passed. And that's going to be uh, left up to the uh, employees of the city to uh, take care of these uh, action that's going to be taken now because it's and, and I guess what I'm saying there's no need of the committee con continue to meet if we're going to still be uh, jumping back and forth uh, uh, about an ordinance that uh, Attorney Payton said he has an ordinance and uh, Mr. Blankenship said he had one and all this meeting back and forth just in my opinion just don't it, it's, it's, it's a waste of time and I know you all have time, you know, you can do other things. Uh, so I just, we just need some direction on which way we want to go with this. So, Madam Chair. Were you done, Councilor? Were you done, Council Matthews? Yeah, yeah, I just need, we need some direction, yeah. And I, and I um, completely um, agree with you. Um, Attorney Payton, can you kind of give us an update um, as to your um, our status with your um, meeting um, with Attorney Blankenship um, um, concerning small sales? Ms. Coso, I, I don't have a meeting plan with them. Remember the last time the committee met, I told you that uh, I had reached out for a proposal from him and I had not received one. And I think Mr. Matthew said he had received a proposal. Uh, from him. And it sounds like he has been dis having discussions with Mr. Blankenship. I submitted an ordinance for your review to consider. If y'all have any questions on that, I'll be happy to go over that with you. Uh, and what date was that ordinance um, submitted? It was back, I don't know what the exact date. I'm going to say it was in November, I think. Okay, well, if you would be kind enough to resubmit it um, for a review, because I, I, mean, I can't recall it at this point, um, you know, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, uh, Council uh, Matthews, have you heard anything as far as from Attorney um, Blankenship making sure that um, on our behalf here, um, you know, um, over legislation here in the city of Bessemer that we have done our part as far as in um, you know, doing what is necessary to have an ordinance in place um, you know, concerning the small sales? No, I had, I haven't spoke with him. I just wanted I didn't want to speak to him until I see, I see what what uh, it, it does the committee want to uh, reconvene. I know it was it was spoken of right at the cusp of uh, the holidays, and now that New Year's is over with, uh, uh, I haven't I haven't said anything. I know everybody was back and forth going. I was out of town one. Uh, Thanksgiving and then uh, Christmas was right on us. So uh, there hadn't been anything uh, done yet. But if if we want to entertain another committee meeting, I think we can uh, uh, we can pull a committee meeting off now better than we could. Uh, uh, Before the holidays, yeah, during the holidays. Okay, uh, 
And also, I mean, when I saw it on the agenda, I was expecting um, to, for Attorney Blankenship to be uh, here in the planning session. Um, did anybody take the initiative um, on reaching out to him to be present here today to further? I mean, I know he, he's probably um, tired of coming back and forth and not really getting anywhere. Um, you know, I guess you know, phone, we're waiting on phone calls. We're making phone calls. And I mean, because it seems like you know, we, we've been, really been running around in circles concerning this um, and not to question or challenge um, attorney Payton's expertise concerning this ordinance, given with the presentation that he presented to us um, before, he seemed to um, be, you know, uh, I guess a lot more knowledgeable as far as in what we needed as a city to, to be in, uh, in place um, for, um, before this bill passes. Right. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, and, and no, I did not uh, invite uh, Attorney Blankenship, and as you well said it, uh, keep going back and forth because prior to Mr. Blankenship uh, coming, I must be totally uh, st straight up about it. Uh, there wasn't any ordinances uh, even, even thought of anything, and I guess over a period of time that came up uh, uh, Attorney Payton, I'm mean, be just be right straight about it. Attorney Payton came up with the with the ordinance, but and and all this back and forth. That's what I'm trying to uh, 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 eliminate. Yes. Now, uh, I can get in touch with uh, Mr. Blankenship uh, because I don't I don't think and and it's been uh, said about an attorney, and I call him Mr. Blankenship because he's not uh, doing attorney. Uh, I don't think I can I can write a resolution or ordinance, but that don't make me a attorney. And uh, we're dealing with him from a business aspect, uh, from a business aspect. Uh, so just like any other vendor, not as an attorney. OK, but uh, I will give him a buzz to uh, have a conversation and see if he's still interested in uh, uh, pursuing what he had already sought. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, can I um, speak to that and I'll be done? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Council Matthews, um, I think that would be oh, um, you know, orderly as far as in given that, you know, um, you, he seemed to be, you know, have, be, you know, have a little more expertise um, regarding this matter. And if we could um, possibly set up a, a call meeting or, um, to deal with this directly, given that, you know, time is upon us. As far as in um, having something in place, if you, if if we can you know um, get past this this hurdle, if you know I, you know I think it'll be greatly appreciated you know by all of us. Well, uh, I, let me ask the count. Is it okay for us the committee to? Uh, uh, why don't the committee just meet a, a, a one last time? And okay. Done with? Yes, sir. Is that Councilor okay? Matthews, that was that was going to be my suggestion. I know that you all said you're tired of going back and forth, and I'm tired of putting it on here not to get a, any results. But uh, that was going to be my uh, next um, recommendation that the committee um, would meet one more time and bring a recommendation back to the council, and we'll go from that recommendation from the committee. And I, Madam Chair, and I will also touch base uh, in, in in Montgomery and see if if it has grown any legs and arms, and if it's going to be some fast movement on this, or it's something that's not going to be up front uh, on the uh, on the uh, for a vote in the uh, in the House or the Senate. Okay. Thank you, sir. We look forward to hearing from you and the committee. Item number seven, Ms. Taylor. Ma Madam Chair. Yes, sir, uh, Mr. Marshall. Uh, just, just one question. Um, what, what gives anybody the impression that Mr. Blankenship has so much more knowledge of small cells? Uh, if Attorney Payton uh, has done an ordinance, uh, would the committee not even look at that? ordinance and see if that's something we could use why would we uh pay somebody else to do something that we could do in-house and save that money i mean that's just like me at my house if i had repair work to be done 
And, and if I could do the work and save money, I wouldn't be out hunting somebody down to come in to do the work for me if I could do it myself. I, I just think it's, it's, um, it's something that needs to be looked at by the committee. Look at the ordinance that Attorney Payton has prepared, discuss that. But I mean, why do we keep chasing down uh, Attorney um, uh, Blankenship? I mean, he hasn't uh, so much effort uh, to try to garner our business. And I just don't see why we would pay somebody to do something that we can do ourselves. Well, uh, to answer that for you, Councillor Marshall, um, in the very beginning, Attorney Payton did let us know he was not knowledgeable about the ORS bill. Um, Mr. Blankenship has been doing this for quite a number of years. It's not only uh, passing an, 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 an ordinance. This particular ordinance, ordinance has to be maintained. So we're as if we're not hiring him as an attorney, we are hiring him. Uh, we look to hire him as a consultant. So as the changes are made, we can depend on Mr. Blankenship to make those changes and be correct in those changes. Now, I didn't hear anyone say that they were not going to look at uh, Mr. Payton's bill. I've already looked at it and compare it with the ORS bill. No one said that they wasn't. I'm quite sure that they are. That is why we sent it back to the committee to bring back a, um, hopefully a solution to this small sale. It sounds like a cat on the line to me. Madam it sounds, Chair. Sounds Madam like Chair. a cat on the line to me. Well, it's a, it's a lot of cats hanging out there. Madam Chair, let me, let me uh, say this. We will uh, look at the, uh, the ordinance that, uh, uh, that Attorney Payton has, uh, has drafted, and we'll uh, consult with Mr. Blankenship again and, and be done with it. And I don't know what kind of, uh, if, if there is a cat, I, I, I don't know where he is, but. Uh, you, you know where but, it is. You know where it is. Hey, bro, you, um, all the cat, you know uh, where a lot of cats all. is, too. You probably one of the ones thank on the line. But anyway, thank Madam you, Chair, I'm done Counselor with Marshall. Okay. Thank you, Counselor Marshall. Thank you, Counselor Matthews. We'll look forward to hearing from the committee. Um, and I think that may be a special call meeting because from the way that we sound, it sounds like that's going to be a special call meeting as well as Strata. Uh, item number seven, Ms. Taylor. Discussion on resolution authorizing a one-time longevity payment for all employees of the city of Bessemer. I think this, Mayor Gilly, are you on the line? Madam President. Good morning, Mayor Gurley. How are you? Good morning to you and the entire council and all that's on the line. Um, <laughs> that is a resolution that I had and so prepared as, uh, as all of you know, uh, all of our employees uh, have worked uh, in, in extraordinary conditions in some sense. Uh, uh, we've been dealing with COVID-19. Um, I, I, I've looked at that uh, situation now and so that we have um, received funding through the CARES Act uh, from Jefferson County. Uh, and I looked at this um, uh, as a way uh, to give all of our employees um, uh, uh, some form and stuff of longevity appreciation for what they've done uh, through this pandemic. So um, that resolution before you is a resolution uh, that I had prepared and such to present in order and stuff to, um, uh, uh, to show our appreciation longevity wise uh, to employees. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mayor. I have, um, Madam Chair, I have uh, one yeah. moment, please. Mayor Gully, when we say one time longevity pay, is it out of this COVID funding? And or if we get more COVID funding down the road, we will not pay them out of that uh, COVID um, funding because we said one time longevity pay. Is that what that means, Mayor Gully? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, we are speaking uh, uh, only concerning the current funding and stuff that we have. Yes, uh, obviously, yes, if additional funding comes down and stuff the road, uh, 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 we could, we'll have to make that decision at that particular time, and we'll bring that back and stuff to this council body. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair. Councilor, yes, ma'am, Councilor Crusoe. Okay, that was one of um, the questions that I had concerning it as to um, why it was deemed um, a one time. I guess, I mean, that, you know, goes without saying if um, you know, this is the only time that we were all receiving money from the county or from the federal government that um, I guess it's, it's kind of understood. Um, you know, I, mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable with the wording uh, being one time longevity. Another um, concern is um, how was um, the amount um, determined as to how, you know, I mean, as far as the uh, distribution amongst the employees and alongside that, you know, since we're talking about uh, COVID, um, this question would be, um, I guess, more so to, um, to, uh, to, to, to Mayor Gully, um, being that you are over administration, where are we as far as in with the any type policies and uh, with COVID policies and procedures for the um the safety of you know I guess you know any type you know, safeguards in place um you um as it relates to our employees and um along with other municipalities do, have we implemented COVID pay um to um, to the city employees um as well. And one more question, um, and I'll, I'll be out of your way and let and uh, you'll give you time to answer them. Um, you, as far as in with the uh, staggered schedule schedules to kind of help combat this, um, you know, not to say I mean, I'm waiting on you to give me an answer concerning this, because if you know if we don't, um, you have policies and procedures or have not a lot a lot a lot of COVID pay for employees, you know, I mean, a, a lot of us are living from paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, in all honesty, given that, you know, um, you know if, if COVID uh, pay is not in, uh, in place for them, you, I mean, you have a lot of them taking the chance knowing that they have been exposed to COVID or even, you know, um, po positive themselves. Um, just for the sake of knowing that, you know, financially, it, you, it'll be a burden uh, on their household if they don't come to work. And, um, you, it, it, you know, COVID is presenting itself, you know, in different departments, um, you know, throughout the city of Bessemer um, at, at, a, at an alarming rate, whereby, you know, I mean, if there are some positions that can be um, performed from, from home, um, have, have, you know, have, you know, have we, um, you know, um, vi um, visited that as far as in, you know, kind of, uh, uh, implementing some kind of, um, you know, I guess, um, I guess work schedule, um, whereby the ones who can work, um, from home or, you know, I mean, just something that we could do to kind of co help combat all of these positive cases that we're um, receiving here in the city of Bessemer. Madam President. Yes, sir, Mayor Um, Obviously, uh, we constructed a policy for all of our employee, employees based on CDC guidelines uh, uh, back, in, back in March when uh, the pandemic and so first, came, uh, first came out. Uh, we've already, at one particular time, uh, um, had employees uh, working and stuff from um, from home. Uh, uh, we've also um, uh, talked to each one of our department heads and stuff concerning uh, uh, 
if at any time uh, in, in a prospective department, if, 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 if uh, we'll consider that and stuff, if that is brought and stuff to us, um, uh, when it comes and stuff to um, the, um, the payment, uh, uh, whether, whether this is a resolution that I posed and stuff to uh, the city council, um, if, uh, if, if, if the dollar amounts and so forth are, are not satisfactory, then, uh, you know, uh, I have no issue and so with, um, uh, um, uh, you know, if, with this body, if you, if you choose, if you so choose to change the dollar amounts. Uh, but uh, uh, when it comes to COVID pay, no, uh, 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 that, that was no specific thing called COVID pay. Uh, uh, we did a longevity pay uh, because that was the uh, uh, the only way uh, that we could compensate all of our employees and not just certain and sub departments. So uh, a longevity pay and so was in lieu of a COVID pay and so whatever whatever COVID pay may be. But you know this right here was uh, uh, an alternative to compensate all employees because. Uh, 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 you know, obviously we value the work that all of our employees and stuff are doing, but they're all, uh, if they're meeting the public, whether you at the utilities or in revenue, whether you police and fire, uh, or street and sanitation, so forth and so on, uh, there is a certain and stuff amount uh, of, um, of exposure that comes and stuff with any, uh, uh, with most of the city jobs and stuff that we have. So, uh, uh, our, our uh, proposal here was not necessarily in such identify, you know, a several group just to pay them, but I felt like all of the employees needed to be compensated during this, uh, uh, during this challenging time. Thank you. I, I thank you. I hope I answered all your questions, Council. Mm, no, you didn't. No, I'm, I'm Madam not President. Well, well, then tell me the ones that I need to answer. Yes, sir. Um, as far one, as one, one, moment, one, one moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one moment, one moment. Uh, hold on just a moment, Councillor Alexander, and let Councillor um, Crusoe complete her question. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. No problem. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you um, for that answer. That was uh, answer, um, Mayor Gilly. I mean, as far as in um, you know, who determined and how it was determined as to um, the amount, um, and I totally agree with you that you know all employees, um, you are you know, I um, have a, a great um, level of exposure to, ma matter of fact, you, you've been exposed coming coming out of your house. So, um, you know, I mean, a lot of them are being equally exposed and should be compensated. I would, it was just questionable, I mean, it was just questionable to me as to, you know, like I said, how the amount um, was being determined. And um, as far as the, the COVID policy and procedure, I know the resolution that we presented back in March I mean, we have, <laughs> excuse me, we have, um, um, you, things have been altered and uh, I guess, and uh, also, you know, we've you come, become a little more knowledgeable um, as it relates to COVID than what we were at the time that the resolution was uh, uh, implemented back in March. So I mean, as far as in possibly going back and revising that to be more suitable for um, what it is that we know now than what we were doing um, back in March when it, when uh, when um, when the pand when the pandemic initially y'all you, know, um, you came up on the scene. That was my my question concerning that. Um, and I guess you, uh, you uh, I guess that's, I'm not certain as to whether this was your answer when you were saying about your departmental heads, the, looking within their departments to see um, it, with, for whom can work from home or the staggered schedules, was that your answer to the question um, as um, what kind of policy and procedure you had in place, if, if, if in, at all concerning, um, you know, um, I guess trying to com combat employees as it related to COVID, was that, was that the answer to that question? Madam President, uh, two things. Uh, we are not operating based on a resolution and so that came, uh, that was voted on in March. What we and so are, uh, are operating on is based on CDC guidelines. As the CDC guidelines change, 
uh, we uh, uh, um, we work and change in so our policy for employees accordingly. Uh, and, and ads and stuff for employees uh, working and stuff from home, I made that call and so early on. And if I deem it necessary, I'll make it and stuff again. But uh, yes, I do get the input and stuff from my department heads and stuff as well. But I appreciate your concern of uh, Council Cruz, but that is my call and stuff to make. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was just making sure that that was the question that you, um, the answer to that, to that question. Thank you so much for your time, Mayor Gilly. Councilor Alexander. Madam Chair, um, again, I agree with um, Councilor Cuso, the wording on the longevity, and I was, I looked the definition up and it said the long duration of an individual life. And um, as far as uh, Mayor Gully said something about COVID or uh, hazard pay or whatever we might have in place, but we don't have a COVID or hazard pay when, when uh, you asked Madam President, would this be in addition to if we get some more money, will they be compensated again? Uh, and my third thing is, like Councilor Crusoe said, who came up with these numbers? And I think we should uh, research the, the other cities that's nearby and, and what they did for their employees, because I have known it to be, uh, I've seen employees that's working one or two years that's doing more work than employees that's worked 10 years. So how can we, I mean, how can you determine who gets what? or how, the amount that they get. And um, with this resolution, like you said, would this be a one-time payment or do, do we stand to get more funds uh, depending on the government and what goes on in Congress? Madam President, um, I, I think I've already answered and so that um, if any additional funds uh, are received, uh, we'll be uh, more than happy and stuff to revisit and stuff, um, uh, uh, additional payments and stuff at that time. What I'm trying and stuff to uh, communicate and stuff is that uh, when asked where did the numbers come from, obviously if I did the resolution, made the resolution available, the numbers came and stuff from me. But these are working papers. Uh, I don't know how to stress that anymore. That if you want to change this number to any number that you so 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 choose, then um, uh, 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 this resolution is to open the lines of communication to you all about compensating our employees. Obviously, the figures came and stuff from me. The one time does not and so go any further than and so the the present funding that we have and so right now and so if additional funding and so comes in we'll sit down and we can uh, uh prepare another resolution and so to that effect but and so if you want to change the numbers uh, uh madam president madam count uh, uh, council members you know uh, uh that, that that's your that's your that's your that's your call to make this is this is what i'm presenting and so to you and so to to, uh, uh, to compensate our employees. If you don't, uh, if you do not agree with the numbers, you could you, you, you can change the numbers as you so choose. Thank you. Uh, Matt, Matt Gilly, I, I, I really don't agree with the numbers. I think we all should sit around uh, in another planning session or do a meeting uh, specifically about the pay so we could do something across the board for all employees so it could be fairly done. Uh, but that that's that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm not I, I, I'm not in agreement with uh, with the numbers, and I, I think they deserve. More. Um, Madam President, once again, this is a planning session. Uh, uh, that's what this is on here for, and stuff to be and stuff discussed. Um, uh, uh, this is what I present. Whatever numbers and stuff that you all want to discuss and choose and stuff to do. And so is uh, uh, I'm in agreement and so with it. I have no issue and so with whatever numbers you decide. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Gilly. Thank you so much. But yes, I think we should all just um, get some data uh, from the following cities 
uh, the surrounding cities and, and, and see um, and really research and, and think about this and think about our employees and how important they are to the city of Bessemer. Mayor Gurley, um, may I ask a question? How many employees are roughly employed for the city of Bessemer? Madam President, uh, we have approximately uh, 625 to 650, uh, 650 employees at any given time. Any other counselor with any other questions and or concerns? Madam Chair. Yes, sir, Madam Councilor Matthews. Yeah, uh, to follow up on, on that, uh, looking for a piece of paper, following up on that question you just asked, and how many of, of those are first responders? Um, Madam President, uh, Councilor Matthews, yes, uh, probably. Um, uh, um, and this is an estimate. I would estimate that um, approximately 250, 200, approximately 250 would be first responders. That includes okay. fire department and that, that's correct. The first responders. Yeah. That's first responders. And 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 the reason. Well, now, and and this proposal that you you gave. Uh, that will exhaust the funds that was uh, accepted or received by the city. Uh, the, the CARES no, fund. No, sir, that would not exhaust the funds. Obviously, uh, there were other uh, purchases made according uh, 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 to the CARES Act and stuff as well. Uh, what this this uh, this amount uh, that we're speaking of now probably. Uh, would take about three hundred to three hundred and fifty thousand, and so of those dollars received from the CARES Act. Okay, and I, I reserve the uh, I, at, at the next meeting to uh, uh, I guess to dive in some more uh, uh, first responders questions that 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 I have as well. But I, I did want to get that amount. Uh, and there wasn't any uh, any consideration of uh, uh, first responders uh, being uh, designated uh, in a category by themselves. Hello. Um, this resolution, uh, uh, Councilor Matthews, uh, was um, uh, to compensate. Uh, all employees, first responders, and stuff included, uh, because yeah. as, I, as I forestated, and so, um, uh, uh, everybody and stuff has had, if I'm at the utilities and I've dealt with receiving, receiving money, uh, 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 obviously I have some exposure and stuff too. Uh, so um, rather than do a, um, a hazardous duty um, for first responders, uh, this resolution and stuff was to uh, compensate all of our employees, including self, uh, uh, first responders. Yeah, and 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 I understand that, and and I agree with you in part. And the reason why I say it because first responders is just what it say. First responder, you know, uh, a, a clerk or a, a, a receptionist, or is not going to be on the scene of a crime. Or, or at a house fire. So, you know, and that's why they call them first responders. So that's why I asked the question, was it any consideration of putting a category for first responders? That's that's why I asked that question because first responders just what it is, it's just plain. And I understand what you said about in holistically all employees, I understand that. But I was just curious and, and, and asking the question, about characterizing first responders and putting them in a tier all by themselves. That's why I asked that question. No, I had not done that. Thank you, sir. Madam, Madam Chair, just one more question. I'm sorry, just one more question. Um, yes, sir. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mayor Gilly, you said that uh, it won't exhaust the fund, um, uh, the, uh, the pay of the 250 first responders and the other uh, employees. Again, I say, let's go back. Uh, let's look at the numbers. I'm asking all the counselors and Mayor Gilly and his staff, let's go, let's meet and have a meeting to go back and uh, look at the funds. And if we're not exhausting the funds at 300 and some thousand dollars, let's give our employees what they deserve. Let's give them a little bit more. Uh, we have to spend this CARES money uh, anyway. So let's let's spend it on, let's do right and spend it on our employees. Oh, I'm sorry, in the word and the longevity. Can that be removed from the, the resolution as well? Madam President. Yes, sir. Based on the law, uh, uh, I'll have to get myself with legal, but I think that the only way that you can compensate uh, all employees uh, with tax and some fair dollars is that you have to, in one sense of those CARES Act uh, dollars hit your general fund, they are classified as taxpayer uh, dollars. But the only way that you can just write a check you couldn't write a check and stuff to an employee and, and unless it's designated and stuff as a longevity and stuff. Like you just could not write and stuff a gift uh, of a bonus to an employee. Uh, if you take away the word longevity and stuff, and if you, uh, uh, then you would not be able and stuff to give um, uh, employees um, uh, a bonus based in, based on just a bonus. Now. Uh, that that may be a legal question. I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm gonna lean to uh, Attorney Payton and Attorney Harris and stuff on that. Uh, uh, I base this based on my knowledge uh, uh, in the past and uh, serving under uh, a previous administration uh, that uh, the only way that you and stuff could take funding and give and stuff to uh, employees is, is it had to be done uh, based and stuff on a longevity. I think we uh, that had been done earlier on uh, in the 90s, and uh, it was done around Christmas time. At that particular time, it was based on longevity. Now um, I have to I have to let the attorneys um, uh, uh, discuss whether you can take longevity out and how could you disperse money to all and some employees of the city uh, uh, without a longevity program. And my my last question. Thank you, Mark. My, my last question, um, why did it take so long for us to be presented with a resolution uh, for our employees for any type of CARES Act funding? I just received the CARES Act funding. I, I don't pay money before I get it. And so, but we just received the CARES Act money on December the 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Gilbert. Thank you, uh, counselors. Uh, I think we will get with Mayor Gully and um, get another meeting together so that we can answer uh, these questions concerning the amount of pay uh, that the, the employees should be getting um, from that CARES Act fund. I will get with um, get with you, um, Mayor Gully after the meeting to see what uh, day do you have uh, available on your calendar that we can call a special meeting and go ahead and, and um, talk about this amount so that we can get uh, some funding from the city of Bessemer to our employees who have been just great about doing what needs to be done here in the city of Bessemer. Um, employees, um, employees. Counselors, do you agree with that statement? Uh, Madam we'll Chair. We'll get together. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is it okay if we we'll allow counsel, uh, legal counsel to go ahead and um, speak to yes. the, um, yes, the longevity? We um, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We were. But the statement that I made about having, calling a special meeting and going ahead and, and taking care of the financial portion of it, is that okay with the counsel? Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. Attorney, yes, Attorney Payne, 
Attorney Payne, Attorney Harris, whichever one. Councilor Donald, this is uh, Dan Payton. Um, yes, sir. To answer the question on longevity pay, a longevity pay is provided for in the rules and regulations of the Jefferson County Personnel Board. So that uh, by doing it as a longevity pay, it falls within the parameters that you can pay through them. Uh, the requirements are that you have a resolution uh, establishing the longevity pay that the longevity payment is based on total uninterrupted service within an agency, that it is paid as a lump sum after a completion of whatever service years you put in there is outlined in this resolution. Um, and so uh, you can base your longevity payment on a flat rate that is based on years of service and that's how this one is, is prepared. Uh, it has to be paid only to full-time regular employees. So the resolution tries it, the resolution is written to fall within the designation of longevity paid by the Jefferson County Personnel Board. Thank you, Attorney Payton. Attorney Harris, do you have anything you want to add to that? Attorney Harris. Thank you, Councilors. I'll be getting with Mayor Gully after the meeting to see what day is good for him, we can meet and discuss the amount uh, of pay that we choose to give to our employees. Item number nine, Ms. Taylor. I'm sorry, item number eight. Item number eight, discussion on Rebuild Alabama Act gas tax funds distribution. <laughs> Mayor Gully, is that one that comes to you or does that go to Ms. Pryor? It, it came from, from, uh, from Mayor Gully. This is Ron Gilbert. I was the one that had requested it. Thank you. Mr. Gilbert, how are you? Happy New Year. I'm doing, doing well. Happy New Year to you too in the council. Uh, as a part of the Rebuild Alabama Act, which was Act 2019-2, uh, as a part of that act, it requires that um, that the city engineer report to the city council the funds received and the funds expended for the rebuild Alabama gas tax distribution. And what council has before them is the is the 2020 and 2021 receipts from the the uh, Alabama rebuild Alabama gas tax. Do y'all have, was that a part of y'all's package and do y'all have that in, uh, information? Yes, I have. Okay, I have that information. Okay, I'll run through it real quick. In 2020, the city collected 11 months worth of that. The tax was, uh, was passed and started in November of 19. Um, and it's broken down by date and, and distribution by month in totals collected for gas for those months was $79,681.16 and diesel uh, collection gas tax was $24,498.76, which is a total collection for fiscal year 2020 of $104,179.92. In uh, the 2021 fiscal year, there were four months collected. It started in October and went, I mean, started January through October. Um, and what we have there is in the gas tax, $34,619.23. In diesel, we had $11,793.15. That's a total to date for the 21 fiscal year of $46,412.38, with a total in the fund of $150,592.30. And there have been no expenditures out of those uh, funds. Councilors, now that you've heard Mr. Gilbert, are there any 
questions and or concerns? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Gilbert, you just mentioned, you said the, the 46, 4, 412 to date is what we... This, this fiscal year. This fiscal year. That's for the four months um, in this fiscal okay. year. Okay, four months in the fiscal year, I got you, okay. And to date, we we uh, our balance is one fifty five ninety two thirty. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other counselor? Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am, Councilor Crusoe. Okay. Um, for clarity. <clears throat> Um, as it was stated before, that the, um, the gas tax money, that's the money that yeah, is utilized um, for the pavement of the roads. Uh, am I correct on that? There are several different gas taxes. This is the Rebuild Alabama gas tax, and it has uh, somewhat different restrictions than, than some of the other gas taxes. Okay. Yeah, this is this is one of those funds, but there are other there are other funds. I turn this one now. I think uh, I think Mayor Gully had presented that in our earlier in our earlier meeting a few months back. Okay, I'm not I'm really clear. I mean, is it any way um, that somebody can provide us the total gas tax that is allotted? for the paving of roads in our districts can, um, or the paving of roads throughout the city of Bessemer, can that um, summation be given to us? I don't have that for, for today. Uh, part of the requirement of the act is that this fund be presented to council with those amounts. So that's the purpose of, um, of this presentation. Yes, sir, I, and I, I greatly appreciate that. But so, what's um, what measures do we need to take in order to um, be provided the amount of the gas taxes that um, are are specifically set aside for the pavement of our roads? Um, Madam President. Um, yes, sir, Michael. Uh, I, I just presented to you all several uh, meetings and so ago. Uh, a total of what was in the gas tax funds. Uh, gas tax funds can be used for several different uh, uh, things, uh, 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 construction, uh, uh, bridge repair, road repair. Not that it's not an amount that's just designated uh, for uh, paving and stuff for roads. Uh, uh, it, 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 um, the amount um, that was presented and stuff to you all for gas tax funds. Um, uh, um, it's, um, it's, it's up to council how they so choose is and so to, uh, 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 to disperse and spend those funds. And, 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 and obviously it can be done for sidewalk repair. It could be done as matching funds and stuff for uh, 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 certain 80-20 uh, grants. So it's a, it's a lot of uh, things that those gas tax funds can be used for. It's up to you to designate and so how much you want to use to pave and sell roads. Thank you. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor Gully, for your response. Um, you know, my question, I mean, you know, maybe you said, I mean, you, it's been presented before. I mean, I'm not challenging or questioning uh, whether you did so or not. I'm asking the question, and, and thanks for um, deeper uh, clarity as to um, that, you know, uh, it could be used for uh, um, several other projects. I really appreciate that, um, that information. But um, again, I ask now that I've, you know, I'm clear on and uh, on with an understanding that there are different type of gas taxes and different type of gas tech, uh, dis uh, distributions. Can the, the, with the ones that entails the paving of roads, can that balance be provided to me again? I mean, maybe the rest of them still have theirs, I mean, and you know, maybe I'm a, I'm a little behind 
on this. If you want to present it to the entire council again, that's fine. But for me, Councilor Crusoe, I'm asking the gas tax that includes it, you know, the, the guidelines whereby you know um, the paving of, of roads can can come out of, can that balance be provided to me? That that's the only thing that I'm asking. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Attorney Harris, uh, 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 Attorney Payne, either one, uh, could you all provide uh, counsel uh, with that, uh, with a copy of the usage of uh, gas tax and how they can be used, seven cents, just the whole list? Attorney Harris. Yes, Counselor, uh, I'm, I'm here. Can you, you hear me? Hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, can you provide uh, uh, council, where well, provide the council uh, a copy of the usage of gas tax? It's it's a it's a list on how they can be used. Sure, I'll provide. You mean a list of what it can be, what the taxes can be spent upon? Is that right? That is that is correct. That sure, is I'll correct. get that. And, and, and I, I do the amount. That's and I there. do and and I do remember that uh, we did receive. Uh, uh, maybe Ms. Coleman may or may not have a copy of, of that, but it was provided to us a few weeks ago, but uh, and, I mean, a few meetings ago, but, you know, things can be easily, you know, misplaced or uh, uh, what have you, but uh, we can get another copy. I think that's what Councilor Crusoe is requesting. So, Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, sir, that is. Thank you, um, um, Council Matthews. Thank you, any other counselor? Thank you, Mayor Gully and Mr. Gilbert. Item number nine, please. Discussion on Salvation Army subgrant agreement and create Birmingham subgrant agreement. Madam President. Mayor Gulley, you... Yes, sir. Yeah, that's, that's an item. Um, uh, that we would like to discuss at this particular time. And I'm going and stuff to step away from the mic and I'm gonna uh, have Mr. Norris explain what we're trying to do and stuff on this. Uh, uh, Can the council hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm trying to pull up a uh, brief presentation. Um, council remember, uh, we got a special uh, CARES Act allocation from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, through the CDBG program. I'm not able to get it. And that allocation was set aside specifically to address uh, COVID in the community, uh, to use community development block grant funds to address COVID related, uh, COVID related issues. What we are asking for is we are proposing to enter into an, a sub-grantee agreement with the Salvation Army of uh, Birmingham and create Birmingham to help us distribute these funds into the community. And I was hoping that I would be able to give you a, a brief presentation, but I'm not going to put it on this slide. I'll walk you through what that program entails. So I'm going to have to do it. Ah, wait a minute, that might be it. I think I may have gotten it, and I apologize. This is about a five minute uh, presentation in which I'm gonna share my screen and walk you through uh, what we're actually proposing through the Economic and Community Development Department uh, to use these funds. Uh, a few weeks back, we let you all know that we got two rounds of funding from the uh, US Department of Housing and Urban Development as part of CARES Act. One was a 
Uh, one was in the amount of about 347,000 and then this in the first round of funding. And then the next round of funding was about $173,000. So I'm gonna share the screen here and hoping you all see this. Um, are, are you all able to see the presentation? Yes, yes, I am not. I am not, but go ahead. I'll get a copy from you. Okay. I'm going to walk you through it. So this is the uh, City of Bessemer Economic and Community Development Cares Act COVID-19 Response Programs 2021. And this will be, uh, we will use these funds to address COVID impacts uh, through the Community Development Block Grant Fund. And what is, oh, let me go back. Uh oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me go back. I've kind of, I've gotten ahead of myself here for a moment. But essentially, we have two programs that are being proposed. One will be an emergency rental, uh, an emergency assistance program, which will cover rent and utilities. And that is a program, a partnership we are proposing with the Salvation Army. The second proposal or program is a program aimed at assisting some of our micro enterprises, some of our small businesses here. The screen, in we lost the screen. I know, I'm trying to get back okay. to the original slide, Councilman. So okay. let me see. All right, I, I, I can definitely do it. I've just not done it on this particular, uh, this particular, uh, <laughs> this particular device before. So I'm trying to get back to the uh, to the previous screen to start. But essentially, uh, and I don't wanna waste a lot of time, so. but I wanna kind of walk you through it so that you have an understanding of what's being proposed. Can you all see the screen now? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I see it. All right. Uh, I'm gonna have to throw it. Ah, there we go. All right, sorry about that. So let me start it here. Um, so again, these funds are being dedicated to address COVID-19 impacts through the Community Development Block Grant Fund. As I told you, spoke early, and as we have pointed out in the past, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has appropriated approximately $521,000 in uh, a special CDBG allocation called CDBG CV funding to the city through the CARES Act. The funding is specifically designed to prevent, prepare, and respond to coronavirus. Uh, what we are proposing is allocating about 347,407 of these dollars, or about 66% of the total funding to two initial programs. The remaining funds we will allocate once demand is ascertained. So we're going to let the programs uh, proceed and get started, and then we're gonna come back and look and see what the demand is, what the need is out in the community. We uh, have about six years to spend the total amount of fund, but we anticipate spending most of these funds by August of 2022. And when I say six years to spend the fund, I'm talking about the total funding allocation. Uh, we had a, a public hearing back on December 7th where we were able to gauge some comment from the public about these funds. We also got some feedback from the Bessemer uh, Public uh, Bessemer Housing Authority on some things that they were observing in terms of the needs of the community. Uh, we also, over the past couple of months, have been getting some feedback from some, uh, some of our small businesses. And this led to the creation, or at least the, uh, the, the proposal of these two programs. Uh, one, as I mentioned earlier, is the, an emergency assistance program. And what we are looking to do is to collaborate with the Salvation Army Birmingham Command and use some of these funds to provide emergency assistance to Bessemer residents impacted by COVID-19. And what that assistance will look like is eligible households will be able to request assistance for rent or utility payments of up to $1,500 a month for up to three months. Households will need to provide documentation that they have been impacted by COVID-19. So you have to show that you have actually had some type of impact related to COVID-19 to be eligible to take advantage of these funds. 
the Salvation Army will serve as the facilitator or subgrantee agency. In other words, they will be the agency that will uh, be administering the funds on behalf of the city. They will work with us. They will be doing the intake of applications. They will be addressing the public that is in need or, or those that are looking to take advantage of some of these uh, some of these emergency assistance funds. And what they will do is they will actually be the, the organization. They will make direct payments to either the utility or the landlord if an individual or a household has fallen behind or they have proven that they are in need of this assistance. And the goal of the program, we, we hope to be able to impact anywhere from 50 to 100 residents of Bessemer through, through this program. And we have some additional funding that could be made available. Again, that's gonna be based on demand. So we're gonna be working with the Salvation Army over the next couple of months, uh, letting them feel the applicants, letting them see what the need is. And they'll be uh, working with us to see if we can uh, dedicate, if they use all of the funding to see if we can find some additional funds to put towards this effort. Uh, the reason we reached out to the Salvation Army is they have been working with Jefferson County on something similar uh, in terms of Jefferson County's community development, CDBG, CV allocation. They also have already been doing some work in Bessemer. Uh, from what they have told us, they've assisted approximately 83 households with utility and rent assistance uh, from a period of May of last year through August of 2020. And so that demonstrated to us need. So they have already been working on a program. We do not have to design a whole new program, but we can work with them and provide funding so that they can continue to meet the needs of residents here in, in the city of Bessemer. Uh, again, we're gonna uh, allocate approximately $232,000 towards this particular program. The 15% of that will go to the Salvation Army for operating costs and the remaining portion will go to the eligible household. We are looking to start this program sometime in February. Um, the only, once we get the agreements approved, we would, uh, the Salvation Army tells us it's gonna take about three weeks for them to work through their corporate offices over in Georgia. Uh, and they will be reporting back to us the number, of how, the number of households that have been impacted, the average cost, uh, the average assistance that, have been, that has been rendered to those households. So that's the first program that we are proposing. Another program that we're proposing is a small business micro enterprises recovery and resiliency program. And what this program is designed to do is it will be a collaboration between the city of Bessemer and Create Birmingham, which is a nonprofit based in Birmingham. We will use our CDBG funds to provide technical assistance and grants to micro enterprises in Bessemer that have been impacted by COVID-19. I'm pretty sure we are all aware that a lot of our small businesses have uh, taken a hit as it relates to the various lockdowns and the various economic, I guess the economic turmoil that has taken place as a result of COVID-19. What we found out was that Although there were some other sources of funding out there in terms of the PPP program and SBA loans, uh, some of our small businesses were not able to take advantage of that. Uh, they were either, excuse me, they were either not set up properly or they did not have their prep, their paperwork, their documentation in order that they could go ahead and take advantage of some of these PPP and SBA loan programs that were out there. So what we're proposing to do in collaboration with Create Birmingham is to work with some of these small businesses to help them get their feet firmly established, to help them, in a sense, get their businesses, uh, I don't wanna say, well, firmly established is probably not the right word, but to help them get all of their paperwork, all of their things in order so that their businesses can be successful in this COVID-19 or this post-COVID-19 this post environment. And at the conclusion of this 10 week consulting session that they will have to go through with Create Birmingham, we propose to make funding of up to $5,000 in grants available to these small businesses. Uh, we are proposing to start the first couple of classes here in the next couple of weeks with about 10 businesses or 10 micro enterprises. And a micro enterprise is a business with five or fewer employees. Uh, allow them to go through the program 
uh, their skin in the game is essentially you go through the 10 week program. You, you finish the program and at the end of the program, they will work with Create Birmingham. They will identify what some of the strengths and weaknesses in their business model is. And at the end of the program, once they have identified that, they will be uh, on firmer, on much firmer footing going forward. Uh, we will provide up to $5,000 in grant assistance to them that they can use, for instance, in the area of, you know, maybe they fell behind on their rent or utility payments, then they can use these to catch up on their rent and utility payments and any additional capital they get from their business uh, that's, um, that is, uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, I got a lot of words, but that is generated from their just ongoing business practices. That's just a little extra capital that they have. The other part of this program that we like is we are partnering with the Bessemer Housing Authority on this as well. And they propose to provide at least two public housing residents to this program. And those public housing residents we will call entrepreneurs. And so we're trying to, in addition, help some of our businesses that are already here. We're also trying to uh, create some new businesses as a result of this uh, of COVID-19. So we're estimating that anywhere from about 18 to 20 uh, micro enterprises and entrepreneurs will be assisted through this program by the time that it's completed. Now, the reason we work with Create Birmingham is that they have a model that's already set up, that's already in place. They've been working in the past with uh, several businesses that have been very successful in the Birmingham area. I think they were one of the consulting firms that helped Eugene's Hot and Hot Chicken. I think we've all heard of them. They had about 250 uh, graduates of their program uh, that have gone on again to be successful businesses. They've worked in the past with the city of Birmingham on some business development uh, platforms. Another thing about Create Birmingham that we like is that they also have access to other sources of funding that once these businesses complete the program, not only will they be eligible to get up to $5,000 from the city, but now they'll be better positioned to go out and take advantage of other sources of funding that are out there to grow their businesses. So we're allocating approximately $115,000 towards this endeavor. Um, this will cover approximately 20% uh, of the operating cost of Create Birmingham. They're asking for about 20% which is allowable under hood rules. And this is going to provide two weeks or two 10 week rounds of business consulting. We hope again to start this in the next two, two to three weeks. And once this program is completed, they'll be reporting back to us on its successes and its failures. And so we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be continuously working with them on this. Um, so that concludes uh, this presentation that gives you an idea of what we propose to do with this funding. And if there are any questions or comments, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to talk with you all about it. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Uh, one moment, please. Let, let me go ahead, Councilor Crusoe. Uh, thank you for that presentation, um, uh, Mr. Norris. Is it any way that that presentation can be e emailed to us for further review along with, um, I mean, I heard your, um, which I mean, I had written it down. Um, you kind of, um, you know, uh, I guess, slated to the answer of it as far as in how these two entities were mm -hmm. um, determined. Right. Um, so <clears throat> down to the um, the uh, create Birmingham, the uh, mm -hmm. ten um, businesses being, um, you, I guess, once they complete the course, um, the um, in order to receive the five thousand dollars. How up to five thousand. Up up to five thousand. Up to five thousand. Right. What I thought. Up mm -hmm. to five thousand. Well, 000. they can get five thousand, but it depends on their need. They, you know, some business might determine they don't need the entire five thousand dollars. We're yes, just sir. making up to that amount available. Okay. Um. Um. With, with these ten um, individuals, how are they um being chosen? Well, we've actually had several that have reached out to us over the past couple of months. We're going to be working with Create Birmingham to set up a platform where they'll be going through the, the program. The Housing Authority will actually choose two of their residents. They're going to be doing the screening for them. And we're going to work with Create Birmingham to, to screen other micro enterprises. Like I said, we've already had several that have reached out to us over the past couple of months and said, hey, we need some help. And so... 
because we know those those particular micro enterprises or businesses reached out to us. We felt it was important to reach back out to them and let them know that we were proposing this type of program. And so they're just waiting to see kind of once we get the agreements in place, we like for them because we know what type of uh, situation they're in, uh, in terms of operating their businesses, we feel that they could really use this program. And so we would definitely want them to be some of the first participants in the program. So okay, it's about. I, yes, sir. Okay, with this, with this amount that um, you send the special allocation um, mm -hmm. on COVID, does this have anything to do with the other CDBG money that- um, No, ma'am. Okay, no so ma'am. That, this that, is that a settles that question. Let me, yes, let me go forth with the yes, sir. Okay, you, totally you, different you, part of money, counselor. Yes, sir. Okay, can are we taking into any type consideration of uh, any of these entities or businesses that have previously received assistance, whether it was to open up the doors, um, to um, receive um, your assistance in other areas? Have we are we taking in consideration those who have never received any type of assistance from the city of Bessemer to you? Know, I guess be advanced to the front of the line rather than to ensure that we're not continuing to. I mean, I'm not trying to take away from anybody, but I just want to make sure that we are being fair across the board to assist with some of the ones who are could be in, in more of a dire need that we have not assisted in the past. Counselor, that's who this is specifically designed for is businesses and micro enterprises that we have not assisted in the past. Uh, these are those, for instance, if you had gone in the past through maybe a city program, you would have had your paperwork in order. You would have been able to, if you had gone through a city program, some of the same underwriting requirements would have allowed you to go out and take advantage of some of the PPP and SPA loans. And so these businesses that have reached out to us have not been able to take advantage of any loans that the city had issued in the past. And so these would be uh, those that have been determined to be in, in definite need. The key is getting them the technical assistance, getting them the business development cons consultation that they need. We want these businesses, these micro enterprises to be successful in our city because we do not want empty storefronts. We want these people to be in a place where they can, they get the knowledge that they need. And I don't know how we would quantify the type of knowledge that Create Birmingham is proposing to provide to these, to these agencies, but I can guarantee you uh, some of these programs that are, uh, that are available through uh, potential business schools or whatever can run you up into the thousands of dollars. And so they are getting this, uh, this assistance for, for basically pennies. And on top of that, once they do finish this program, they'll be eligible to receive up to that $5,000. And so to answer your question previously, we are looking to uh, assist those that we know are definitely in need that have not been able to get assistance from any other source so that they can move forward. Because if they're successful, that's going to continue to contribute to our tax base here in the city of Bethesda. Yes, sir. Just one, one more um, quick statement. Um, with the numbers, okay, were, are, did you answer as to whether you'll be able to um, email um, a copy of the slide to us so um, we can um, have it um, in our hands to review? Yes, absolutely. And okay, it's just now. a, uh, you'll also be getting, once we finish the agreement, you also have the actual agreement themselves so that you will be able to see exactly how that's going to be spelled out with both agencies. Yes, sir. Now with the um, Create um, Birmingham, I heard you say that, it, you know, like we said, up to $5,000. Just granted, if um, 10 of these individuals completed the course and did um, and was successful on um, all of the requirements, that's $50,000. Um, you said that $115,000 is being allotted to that program. That mm -hmm. leaves, if, if, if my math is correct, $65,000 on, on the table. Uh, mm -hmm. We have um, you know, uh, more, um, it, well, the 65000 exceeds um, the $50,000 that that, you know, that's being set aside to assist. I mean, how is, how is that 65000 being broken down rather than being in place for further assistance? Counselor, if you remember, I said it would be two rounds of consulting. Uh, there will be one starting, there will be one 10-round, 10 10-week 10 uh, consultation process that we will have 10 go through. And then there will be another that will follow after that first 10 weeks. So actually, so that um, we have 20. Okay. 
Right. If you remember two, during the presentation, I said we I, hope. I heard. I, mean, I wrote down the um the two rounds, but that still didn't mm -hmm. break it down. Um, yeah. it, it, it would be about with, eighteen to twenty. It would be about yes, eighteen sir. to twenty micro enterprises. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Counsel. I, you have any idea as to when we'll, we'll receive that email? Uh, the email as soon as I know that we can go ahead and move this. Uh, get it on the agenda for next week. It shouldn't be any problem with me downloading this to my computer and sending it to the council. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Norris. One moment, please. I have a problem with that. We can't get paperwork until we agree to go forward yeah. with this program. I have a problem with that. I have a problem mm. with that. If we can't have well, paperwork, actually, we agree. Hold on, Mr. Norris. You're going to have to follow the rules as the counselor. Um, if we cannot get a copy to look at this and to study this, because I'm going to ask this body to um, have a meeting because there are questions that's left on the table that has not been answered. I understand this is a wonderful, and I've been waiting for a program to help our small businesses here in the city of Bessemer. But just to run through it and to move it through for next week, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I truly don't think that's going to happen. And I'm getting, uh, I'm getting emails and text messages from citizens. Um, do know that you can call Mr. Norris' office. And he will explain whatever question that you have, uh, citizens, whatever questions that you have concerning this, you can call Mr. Norris' office. I cannot explain any of this to you, and I do not have the paperwork, but you can call Mr. Uh, Mr. Norris' office, call the main number, and ask for Mr. Norris, and they will um, transfer you up and any questions that you have. I'm sure he'll be happy to answer them. Now, back to what I was saying, we cannot get a copy of this presentation until we agree on the project? No, Council, let, let me clear that up. We Please. are proposing... We are proposing to present the sub-recipient agreements to you on next week so that you can vote on them, so that we can begin working with these, these organizations. Once you get the sub-recipient agreements in your package, it will spell out all of the details, what we're requiring of the sub-recipient agency. This presentation was simply so that you can get an overview so that when you do get those agreements, you will have a better understanding of what the programs themselves will actually do. Right, because we needed authorization to go ahead and move to enter into an agreement with these and they're waiting right now. To, uh, so it's not a matter of presenting something to the council so that you're not aware. This presentation was to make you aware of the framework of the proposal so that by the time you get the agreements in your package, you'll understand what's being proposed. Ma Madam Chair. I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a visual person. And some things I need to see on paper prior. Yes, sir, um, Councilor Matthews. Well, yeah, I mean, earlier we were just talking about the uh, the presentation that uh, Strata gave, okay? Now, I was looking at the presentation uh, then when Miss George was going through it. I would have appreciated if I had had that presentation what Mr. Norris just gave just like I had Strata. Now, I didn't know all the council members didn't have it until it was mentioned. And I concur with the council members that said that they didn't have it and they would have liked to have had it to go along with. It. And I would have liked it this one as well, just like we did in the earlier presentation. So, I mean, I concur with you, uh, uh, Madam Chair, with the, uh, with the request of having a uh, copy of that pres that presentation, uh, uh, but I do have uh, a, my my question is: Can it create Birmingham? I, I don't have no problem with Birmingham. I have residents, friends, council members that I you know uh, on on the council there. But we can we not create our own brand investment opposed to saying. And it's just a question. I, I'm just asking uh, 
could we not create our own brand, uh, Bessemer Strong, uh, uh, keeping Bessemer Strong? I don't know. I'm just throwing something out there. But rather than the, go with the uh, uh, being this, the shoulder or the arm of Birmingham, uh, create Birmingham, I'm just asking, or uh, is that that's something that you all tagged along with this? Uh, how did that get, if it's going to be for Bessemer, it's going to be for the Bessemer House or Bessemer Resident, Bessemer Businesses. Why is it create Birmingham? Is that a regional approach or what? Just Can you expound on that? Let me make sure I understand the question. Um, so why did we go with create Birmingham? Essentially, they have already done some work that's similar to this. They've already done some business consulting. We actually, yeah, reached, out to, we actually reached out to them and another agency, and we found that their Create Birmingham's framework, their strategy yeah. have been very successful. Again, they've graduated over 250 small yeah. businesses. Yeah. Uh, okay. In addition to that, these small businesses have been successful. And yeah. on top of that, they actually have access or they can get some of our small businesses connected to other sources of funding that are out there. And so that's why we reached out to them. If there was an agency in Bessemer that did that, we would reach out to that agency in Bessemer, but we do not have an agency in Bessemer that does that. Yeah, I, I, notwithstanding what you just said, I understand that part. I said, why didn't we create our own brand? I'm not talking about reaching out tuscaloosa did the same thing they 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 helped their small businesses they through their uh, uh chamber of commerce and uh talked to council mckinstry and mayor Meta. but what i'm saying why didn't we create our own brand period i'm not talking about the the success they had why didn't we create a brand with bestmer's name that's that's all i'm asking is that something that's not obtainable or something? Well, that... Counselor, it is a City of Bessemer Recovery and Resilience Program. That's the program itself. That's what it okay. is. We're just working with them to assist businesses here in Bessemer. Okay. Well, I'll be looking forward to uh, receiving that uh, information uh, pretty uh, pretty soon so I can see it as well. But it's a good program. I, I want to help businesses as well and, and, and the residents as well. But I was just uh, would like to look at the presentation also because I think uh, it's a good uh, it's a good gesture because uh, the qualifications uh, because there's a, an array of things that happened during this COVID-19 that uh, will help people, even if it's the death of a spouse that was working and no one else was in the house was working. And I, I understand that in its totality that whatever impacted you from having the financial stability to go move forward in, in your daily activities and, and having the uh, means necessary, I understand that part. So uh, that's a, uh, that's something that's that would help our citizen out. May not help all of them out, but I'm hoping it'll help the ones that's uh, the needy and not the greedy. Correct, and Councillor, those are very good points because that's what you know. They've reached out to us over the past couple of months, and they said, you know, where is the city's response? And so we yeah. have these funds available, and so we have talked with them. We've talked with others, and we are making some. We're 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 listening to them. And we're seeking to address some of their concerns. And we're yes, seeking, sir. just as you said, to see how we can assist them. And you're right. We're not going to be able to assist everybody. We are going to look at those uh, and look and see who's definitely in need and see what we can do. It's the same that goes for the, the emergency assistance program. It's not going to be for everybody. You're going to have to document essentially that you are definitely in need. And HUD has required that as part of these funds. And so that's what we're looking to do. We're trying to get something out into the public to assist the public because that's what we're here for is public service. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am, Councilor Alexander. Uh, Mr. Norris, I would have loved to have the Salvation Army in uh, Birmingham, create Birmingham come present uh, to us. I know you said it was another uh, 
entity that y'all was looking at um, as opposed to create Birmingham, I wanted to know why didn't that come before us as a presentation? I would have loved to see them present like Councilor Matthews said. And as far as the Salvation Army, we don't have any entities in Bessemer that can do the same thing that the Salvation Army is going to be doing because with their 15%, we will be paying them $35,000 uh, for their 15% for running the program and $17,000 uh, to create Birmingham to be over their program. And like Councilor Matthew said, I would love to see a program in Bessemer like this. Do you know, or have you even tried to reach out to anyone to even find out if there is any entities in the city of Bessemer uh, like Create Birmingham? Uh, Councilor, I think we did. We did mention that earlier, and I think I answered that when I was responding to Councilor Matthews. If there were an organization that was doing something like this that was close to Create Birmingham Investment, we'd have reached out to them. Let me address something that you said. The Salvation Army actually has an office here in Bessemer. Okay. And okay. it is that office that has actually assisted 83. As I mentioned earlier, they said they have assisted about 83 families or 83 households with assistance from the period of May of last year through August of this year. And so they have an office here in Bessemer that even before this was providing uh, utility assistance to families in need because they had already been working with Bessemer Utilities on that. Okay, thank you. I think this is great. And I think it, it couldn't come at a better time. I wish it would have came sooner than later for our citizens and for, uh, for our business owners in Bessemer. Thank you for locating that money for, for the city of Bessemer. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Council. Mr. Norris, let me ask a question. You said up to 15%, up to 20%. Did anyone suggest 10%, 5%, 7% that we have to start off at the top of the totem pole? Well, I know in the case of the Salvation Army, if they're getting 15% from Jefferson County to administer their program. And so we asked them if they could do it at 15% for ours, and they said that they could do it. In terms of Create Birmingham, this is 20%. So this is about 15000 maybe $23,000 total. Um, they actually use consultants, and they would have to pay the consultants that would actually work with the, the small businesses to walk them through and to provide the technical assistance to them as part of the program. Okay, so they they've reached out to a third party. You know, I'm looking at this, um, Mr. Norris. I'm looking at this as the back half of small small sale. That's that's what I'm looking at. This uh, we can get consultants to come in and do X, Y, and Z and pay them, but we cannot get um, consultants to come in for small sale. That's just just the back half of small sales. Thank you, Mr. Norris, um, for your time. Um, because I know this takes a lot of time to do. Thank you for your time. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. There's one more um, quick question um, to Mr. Norris before um, we move on, if you don't mind. Um, uh, Mr. Norris, as far as in um, with the money um, that's been allotted to as assist with businesses, um, are we focusing more so on small businesses? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, as to how are they being identified? Um, is it a certain amount of staff members? Um, you, I mean, is it where, I guess, different parts um, of the city of Bessemer? Um, just, you know, hypothetically, I think I heard you say something about the technical aspect of things. Like for instance, um, our library, um, would they qualify um, under this grant money? A library wouldn't qualify that. That's a public institution. That's not a private. That's not a private entity. Okay, uh, thank you. But you know, I think you know, uh, you know, one of you know, we have some business owners here in Bessemer that have opened here in the last couple of years. Some of them in our downtown, and they have said, you know, uh, hey, we're we're in need of some assistance. We're needed some help. Again, it's it goes beyond the money. It's the technical assistance that will actually help them get their businesses set up to operate smoothly. And remember this money is set up to prepare and respond to coronavirus. So we're using it to help them make transition 
into a, a COVID-19 slash post-COVID-19 environment. We want them to be set up to be able to, to prosper whatever the new normal is. Say for instance, if you're a restaurant or, or a cafe or a small shop and you had been accustomed to people coming in and sitting down in your shop and eating, you may want to start looking into delivery services. And so what this agency, what Create Birmingham does, because they've already done that with some businesses that were based up in the Birmingham area. And let me say this, they have assisted in the past, I think maybe one or two, uh, maybe either business or a nonprofit here in, in Bur Bessemer. Uh, what they have done is they will connect these businesses with those that have already been successful so that they can get some mentoring and, and, and Again, for the business and investment, that's huge in terms of helping you make your transition and be able to operate in a COVID-19, post-COVID-19 environment. So, Counselor, we are, again, going to look. We know, as I mentioned earlier, that we've had several that have reached out to us. Uh, and let me point this out. There is a stipulation that you cannot have duplication of services. So, for instance, if you were able to get a PPP loan, um, and you may not, you probably will not qualify for this program because that's federal money that you've already been assisted with. And so you would not be able to qualify for this program. Yes, sir. And thanks again for your- I hope that answers your question. It, it did. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Councilor Marshall. Uh, Mr. Norris, thank you very much for working on this program. I, I do know how important it is for small businesses to really get the proper training. And the reason that so many fall by the wayside so early is that they have not had the proper training to understand how to organize and run a business. So this really ought to be a shot in the arm for a lot of our small businesses who will have to go through that 10 week training program. I'm familiar with Create Birmingham and I know the kind of work they do so I can, I can pretty much assure that those, those people who go through that program are gonna be on stronger footing and really will have a great opportunity to succeed. Thanks again for your work. Thank you. And, and let me point out too, uh, Mr. Ward has worked with me on this. And so uh, he's been right there in addition to a lot of his other duties. He's been there and he actually has been working through this. As, you, as many of you know, his mother passed uh, right around Christmas. So uh, keep him in your prayers, but he has been working with us on this and we have been looking at this program for well over a month and we've been talking to these agencies and we'll be, we're just trying to bring the best tools and resources to the city of Bessemer that we can. Thank you, Mr. Norris, for that presentation. I am glad the city of Bessemer will be able to assist uh, some of its residents, not all, but some of uh, some of its businesses, not all. Thank you for um, informing me that Mr. Ward's mother passed my sincere condolences. I That's did right. not know that right. uh, his mother had um, passed. Thank you, uh, Terrain. Item number 10, please. Item 10, requesting status of demolition on the following properties in District State. I um, think Councilor Matthews asked for this to be on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. You, can you hear me? We can hear you, Councilman. Yes, Would you like I me to? You. Yeah, um, yeah. I, the last time I, I received some information uh, about this was, uh, you know, the latter part of last year, um, and one was uh, the problem. Two, it's some feedback coming from somewhere. Uh, 2007, 16th Street, it was uh, being tested for asbestos uh, in 1918th Way, permission to demolish form. And 1908, 18th Way, uh, the Russells, uh, permission to demolish form uh, is being sought. So uh, I spoke with the Russells uh, over the weekend and they told me that it had been, uh, permission had been granted. So just trying to see what's the timeline and uh, because these uh, structures 
are slowly falling in. And I I wouldn't be surprised in the next week or so that they won't be just hit the ground <laughs> just looking at them. So I'm if Mr. Nars or someone under him can uh, expound on that, please. Yeah, Councilor Matthews. Um, yeah, in addition, uh, you are correct. They did get the written approval from the owners to demolish that property. These three properties will go out in the next batch of properties that will be bid for demolition. Uh, so the final work has been done on them, and we have about anywhere from 16 to 18 properties that are going to be bid out for demolition. We just concluded uh, uh, demolishing about 15 properties. So the three structures that you have uh, reached out to us about are on that next list, and they'll, they should be going out to bid for demolition contracts in the next couple of weeks. Next couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Norris. Item number 11, please. That is on upgrade and art install street lights on Flint Hill Road between 4th Avenue and Carriage House Road. B, that is on upgrade and art install street lights on McCullough Road between Flint Hill and Eastern Valley Road. I think uh, Councillor Matthews asked for that one to be on the agenda. Yes, I did, Madam Chair, uh, along that same timeline. And since uh, I did request this, and I was said that it would be uh, the stat, it would be looked into. But since then, we've had uh, as recent as a couple of weeks ago, we had a car to take down a pole, and we've had some issues and uh, problems right there on McCullough Road behind the uh, uh, Dollar General where we had complaints concerning them going through that little opening and even uh, you Madam Chair I think you you had you you've been a person of trans <laughs> transporting through there yourself so there have been several uh, problems in that area due to bad lighting, uh, illegal drug sales, uh, hidden poles, and people just uh, hidden even the head wall there by the fire department. That head wall is, I don't know why, when it's gonna get repaired, but its it's been hit. And even the lights that used to light up the fire station, it's two lights, been uh, 47,000 uh, high pressure sodium lights, one in the front and one light up that whole fire station property those lights i guess maybe i let the fire 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 personnel uh complain about that but it's 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 some inadequate lighting in these two uh streets so uh, just trying to see where we are is that a question for mayor gully yeah, that's that's who said that they would look into it. He said he would, uh, I guess, get with the uh, Bessemer Electric and have them to do a study out there. Uh, is there any progress on that, Mayor? No, President. Um, I'll have to reach out to the utility and get a status report, and I'll have to let you know, Counselor. Oh, so it did you... Has it been put in for or is it something just fell through the crack? Sir? A status report means that it's already been put in. Is so if it fell through the crack, I just I will be telling you that I'm going to report oh. it. So uh 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 yes, sir, it has been. I I'll have to get a status report and stuff again on uh on, on where they are relevant to that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Gully. And I, um, I must say this to the council, as I was reading, um, we have been recording Dartmouth Avenue and Dartmouth Avenue is dark for Dartmouth Avenue. Well, I was reading on Facebook and the young lady that um, had an accident and there was a fatality, she came on and she stated that she has post some type of syndrome 
because it was so dark on Dartmouth Avenue and she could not see. She wrote a long post there on Facebook. Um, I would like for Mayor Gully to read that. Um, and maybe that will, um, some type of way we can get some assistance with some more lighting on Dartmouth Avenue. I know that we say 300 feet, 300 feet, but maybe the lights need to be changed, the bulbs need to be changed, or some type of way we can add some more uh, lighting there on Dartmouth Avenue because I sure would hate for another fatality to be there on Dartmouth Avenue because it was so dark, as she stated. She said it was just dark as she couldn't see. So I would hate for something else to have to happen. Um, Mayor Gully, if we would just uh, look at um, how can we add uh, more lighting there on Dartmouth Avenue or maybe a traffic light or something to slow down that traffic because once they get a start there from 19th Street, they're going straight into Carolina Terrace and Dartmouth Avenue, not caring about anyone or any situation. Thank you, uh, Mayor Gully, for listening to us. Item number 12, please. Fiscal year 2021, tap contract funding agreement for streetscape improvements along 19th Street North, project number TAP B8. Dash TA two one nine three seven. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I, I have I have questions on that. Um. May I? Madam Chair? Yes, like sir. That? Okay. Yeah, I had questions on that. Is that is that project uh streetscape? Um my question, first question is hold on, let me get my thing. Is that something that's gonna go along with uh with with strata or it's just streetscapes design that's that's one is it going to go along with strata and two uh maybe one why wasn't this particular project bid it out that would be to um councillor matthews that would not be a question for me that I would be a question for. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, wasn't asking I thought you were asking me. That would be a question for Mayor Gully and or Mr. Gilbert. Oh, ma'am. Uh, 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 Madam President. Um, yes, sir. Uh, um, no, this uh, <laughs> this would this would not be independent of uh, Council Matthews. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you recall, uh, streetscape um, along um, on Third Avenue, right there uh, uh, in front, from Third Avenue to Seventeenth, uh, to from Eighteenth um, to Nineteenth Street. I'm sorry. Uh, how how that uh, lighting and, and, and concrete and, and benches had uh, been improved along uh, 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 along that area and stuff right there. Uh, uh, what this proposes to do is a continuation of that. This is a, this is an 80-20 uh, 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 grant. Uh, I'll let Ron and stuff talk to uh, speak to the specifics and stuff of it. Uh, but uh, no, sir, it does not. Uh, 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 it's independent and stuff of Strata. And uh, Councilor Matthews, just Ron Gilbert. What that will be is that is the agreement between the city of Bessemer and the state of Alabama. So once um, once uh, council approves, if council approves this, the funding will be set up and then the plans will have to be done. It'll have to be bid. And once it's bid, then that will come back to council for approval. 
before the construction begins. Um, so this is just the first step in that process, but we were, the city was awarded those TAP funds through ALDOT and the MPO. And this oh. is that agreement that the state requires. Okay. That's the agreement that the state requires and those uh, uh, listing of engineers and the fees and all of that, that would uh, be something that the council has to vote on after the fact. Am I correct? Uh, now what I was talking about was the construction contract. So okay. Well, yeah, what I'm talking about, the actual document that we received, and I'm asking, my, my question is, why wasn't that bid it out? Professional services, Councilor Matthews, are not, are not bid out. Yeah, I mean, I know if it's a professional service, it's not, it don't have to be a professional service, does it? Huh? I'm not sure I understand your question. If it's a, there's two parts to it. One is you got to do the engineering plans. You got to prepare those plans. Those plans got to be approved through the state. They're bid in accordance to state law. Once they're bid, the contractors that's on that list would, that's the state approved contractors mm -hmm. would, uh, would bid on it. And then the low bidder would be brought back to council for approval to enter into a contract. And what's the ceiling on what what could that what could that range to that that professional service contract? It could be in the tune of what? Talking about dollars. Uh, it normally runs somewhere in the six to eight percent range for um six to eight percent range for the actual plan preparation and then once the contract is bid then uh, a part of the ceni services would be in there and that would be probably in a range of 13 to 15 percent of the contract amount well i, I was trying to get to a, a, a dollar range amount that's what i was trying to, that's what i was trying to get to I guess what I'm asking is that professional service contract agreement could be how much or uh, approximately? 65 to $70,000, probably somewhere around 68 for that project. Okay, I was right. Okay. Okay, that that ends my question. And I and I guess my other question is could could that professional service contract and attorneys attorneys can uh, uh, either say yay or nay or whatever could that professional service contracts could they be bidded out as well as uh, an, uh, the engineer doing it I'm just asking a question and I appreciate a just a short answer I don't guess no attorney on the phone. No, I'm, uh, this is Shan. I'm here. I was waiting for Mr. Harris if he had a comment, but I'll be happy to give you one. The state law does not require professional service agreements to be bid. That's the short answer. Huh. Okay. I don't think Mr. Harris, he must have been fell out the chair, went to sleep. He's sitting right there in the conference room at the city hall. Counselors, I've asked Mayor Gurley okay. earlier in the meeting 
I've asked Mayor Gurley earlier in the meeting to look at his schedule and see if we can we can um, have a meeting concerning item number seven. With um, with that being said, and it's all about CARES Act, uh, item number thirteen. Can Madam, we discuss? Madam, Madam Chair, I uh, let me just I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be finished with twelve. Uh, let, uh, I don't I don't want to hold up a project. I was just asking asking questions, but from a standpoint of these uh, professional service contracts and uh, and bid, I think we need to, uh, in the, somewhere in the very near future, sit down and, and, and talk about those uh, and, and look at some, uh, look at our policies on those. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Councilor Matthews. Councilors, uh, with item number 13, since it and seven, are are all COVID. Uh, I've asked. I will ask the council if we'll consider doing item number thirteen and seven in our meeting this week. Is that okay with the council? Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Hello, Attorney Harris. Yes, Council. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes, I'm sorry. Your question was again. I was. Councilor Matthews had posed a question for um, either of the council, uh, the attorneys, to answer, and I think Attorney Payton answered the question. Yeah, he answered. Uh, yeah, he did. I believe I heard him. Uh, he did answer the question, and this was regarding whether professional services have to be bid. And and uh, uh, Ms. Payton opined that uh, uh, that does not have to be bid. And he's right. Alabama law doesn't require it. It's not required. But uh, as to whether someone wanted to take some bids or or that that would be a different thing. But it's not required by law to sort of do. That's my understanding. Yeah, and, and that's my that's my understanding as well. But uh, uh, after after this, I think that that we need to uh, look into some of these professional services being uh, bidded out, especially when they exceed the bid, Alabama State bid. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Well, that okay, Council uh, President Donald, may I speak? Just a minute. Um, yes, sir. Mr. Matthews, the Board of Engineers and Surveyors will not allow engineering firms and survey firms to bid against each other. It is against state law. And um, if the attorneys need to check into that and report back to you, but um, they, they will not allow it. Okay, and 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 you and and engineers and surveys are not the only uh, ones that do professional services. Okay, I'm just saying professional service is the catch-all phrase. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Are you finished, Councilor Matthews? Yeah, I'm finished. Okay, are you finished, Mr. Gilbert? Councilors, I would like to table item number I would like to table item number 13 and add it in with item number seven when we have the meeting um, the latter part of the week. If that's okay with the council. If that's okay with the council. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'll give I'll give uh, Mayor Gilly a call and see what day we can meet. And uh, I need a motion to adjourn, please. I need a motion to adjourn. Motion Make a motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. I need a second. And a vote. No. Roll call. Mm -mm, I'm not, that's a bad roll call, sorry. <laughs> Ms. Taylor, are you on the line? Okay. Roll call. Councilor Alexander? Aye. Councilor Crusoe? Aye. Councilor Marshall? Aye. Councilor Pan? Aye. Councilor Payton? Aye. 
Councillor Matthews? Aye. Councillor Donald? Aye. Six ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Thank you, councillors, for your time and have a great week. You'll hear from me hopefully by tomorrow. Have a great day now. Bye-bye.